Well, welcome to the service for Palm Sunday from All Saints Chiang Mai. We'll be worshipping online again on Zoom and we have more than 25 different people, almost 30 different groups joining us this morning, including the Youth Charity Foundation kids who are going to sing for us, Hosanna, Hosanna. So it should be a wonderful service. So just you can listen, take part, and we thank you for doing this and we pray a blessing on you and give thanks to God for all that God is doing for us. So please enjoy. Well, we can hear the clock chiming, which means that it is actually obviously time to begin our worship. So I think we should begin together. What I will do, I will mute everybody um, when it's just me speaking and then bringing people to speak so we don't get background noise. And um, that might be the best way of doing it. So let me just mute people and we'll begin our worship together this morning. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin the solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete the work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. You can wave your palm branches now so we can see we have the palms with us. So if everyone can wave their palms and we can see that you have them. Okay. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as a Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I now ask our first reading, which is going to be read this morning by... Uh, who's going to be reading the first reading? Let's have a look. Who's giving the first reading? Is it um, Don? Were you, did you volunteer for the first gospel reading? Okay. I think that's mine. Yeah, so John, Don will now read us the gospel reading together. From Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mild, full of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
And now we'll ask the children of the Youth Charity Foundation to sing for us Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We're going to ask them to sing. So if they can do that now, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much for that. It's wonderful to be able to hear the words of Hosanna sung so joyfully and so loudly. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Let me say to everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. We're now all going to sing together. So just welcome, let me say again, welcome to this worship time for All Saints Chiang Mai. It's very strange that we're all together, but not all together. But we can still worship God, we can still be in God's presence as we sing. So we're going to sing together now our first hymn, which we'll all sing. All glory, Lord and honour to thee, Redeemer King. That's what we're going to sing and we'll sing together.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, Grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path to glory. Amen. Chris Tanan will now give us our psalm. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one who is dead, out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. Thank you, Chris. And now Krista Crawford will give us our reading from the New Testament reading. Verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but it emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Please. to God. And now we come to our Gospel reading, our main Gospel reading for this Sunday. For it is Palm Sunday, but it is also Passion Sunday. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every other name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
The gospel reading will be read to us this morning or this evening, this afternoon by Jean and also at the Youth Charity Foundation. If they want to have someone read it to them in Thai, they can do that as well. And so they'll have it in Thai. But I'll ask Jean now to give us the reading. Thank you, Jean. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone who they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him word, have nothing to do with the innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around them. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man for Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. They sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, 
darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Numa, Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was the son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Amen. We come now to our sermon for this Palm Sunday. And it really is a most extraordinary Palm Sunday indeed. I never preached the same sermon twice. That's what I like to say. I never preached the same sermon twice. But it wouldn't be appropriate in any case to preach any other sermon which I preached before today. Because things are so unusual. Things are so different. Things are so unprecedented in our world, in our situation. God is working, but God is working in a situation where we've never seen before anywhere around the world. When things are over, when things go back to normal, things will have changed. It's good to have humour sometimes at times like this, and, and I heard a joke someone told last week. They said, love like Jesus, but wash your hands like Pontius Pilate. And that was in our reading today. Washing hands has taken on a moral significance. We're called on to wash our hands, to keep our distance, to wear a mask in, in different countries. We have to keep apart from each other. We have to stay apart in order to stay alive. It's a strange world we're living in and after two weeks of lockdown, I'm now thinking I can't wait to be back with all the people in Chiang Mai and just to be able to interact with each other normally. And those of you who are in Chiang Mai but confined to your homes, I'm sure you're, you're feeling exactly the same. Now Easter is a time of self-sacrifice. It's a time when we remember the self-sacrifice of Jesus. That Jesus gave all and gave up his life because of the love of all humankind. We're seeing lots of self-sacrifice around us on our television screens right now. Those health workers who are prepared to give up their life for their friends, or not even their friends, but just for those they're called to serve. People see that self-sacrifice, that day by day they, they demonstrate just by going into work where there are sick people and they know they could catch the disease. But the crowds can be fickle, of course, as they were with Jesus. The fickle crowds with Jesus were crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, on Palm Sunday. They were throwing and waving their palm leaves in celebration. But a few days later, they were shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. They changed their mind. The situation had not particularly changed, but they had changed. Maybe they were tired of this Jesus, even after a few days. In the UK and the US and in Thailand, we're in lockdown. We can't go out. 
One of the things they've been doing in England and other parts of the UK is clapping care workers. They've been going out onto their doorsteps, hanging out of their windows at 8 p.m. on Thursday evenings and clapping and clapping and clapping and giving thanks to those people who are giving, possibly giving their lives, prepared to give their lives in self-sacrifice by serving those in need. But we've also seen in a few instances, even in this, the crowd turning the other way. Some care workers have been attacked because people were afraid that they were carrying the disease and maybe a threat to them. And we've had some stupid people vandalizing 5G mobile phone masks because of the fear that somehow the 5G mobile phone signal is spreading the virus. People can act in a very strange and unpredictable way. For Jesus on Palm Sunday, the people were praising him. On Good Friday, they were shouting that he should be killed. Now we all have to ask in this, this time, how can we understand God? What is God doing? Well, we can't understand God, but sometimes we start to ask the question, why? Sometimes that's an academic question just in our, in our boredom perhaps, but when it hits us close to us, in anguish, then it can become a real cry from the heart of why, oh God, if we lose a loved one, if we see a loved one threatened. As my mum said before the service to a few of you, we've already know of three people who died in a Methodist church in Sheffield. And gradually more and more of us will know people who have the virus or who have died from the virus. We'll be asking, how is God in this and, and how is God working in this situation? It's the same question when we look at the story of Good Friday. Why did Jesus have to die? Did he have to die? Well, I think whatever we understand, and maybe we can never understand completely, we can say, yes, it was because of God's love. It was because Jesus was not prepared to take the easy way out. He could have come down off the cross, but he wouldn't do that because he was going to stand with our humanity and love and show God's love to each one of us. And so there's been some controversy around the world when leaders have been tested for the virus and other ordinary people cannot be tested. But Jesus as God, as the one above us, as our leader, didn't take an easy way out, but went the way of the cross because that was the way of our life too. So when people ask us, why doesn't God stop this virus? We have to say, God doesn't work that way, but that God is with us. And as we saw Pilate washing his hands, why was he doing that? Because he felt, he said, the blood, the guilt of this man should not be upon me. And there's so much idea of blood and revenge and, and guilt in some theories of the atonement of why Jesus died. But I don't think that's why Jesus died. It was to do with Jesus' blood, but it was the lifeblood, the sharing of his life, the giving of his life. And as we take the Eucharist in a little while, we'll be taking the body and blood of Jesus. And we can say that's the body and life blood of Jesus, the body and the life of God. So as we remember those doctors and nurses who are risking their lives for us, giving their lives in self-sacrifice and, and all those who work with them in hospitals and care homes and other people, we have to remember the poor people who aren't giving their lives in self-sacrifice but really have no choice and are struggling at this time. We need to reach out to them for that is part of our action as the people of God. And as these people gather together, if only virtually, we can be united for we are the body of Christ and we will be together again. Perhaps the vision of heaven is taking on a new meaning, for it is a corporate vision. It's a vision not of people individually floating alone on clouds, but it's a vision of people together worshipping God, united as one body, no longer separated, but united and reconciled together. Christ died for us, but that is not the end. We will see God with us. We will see Jesus 
risen from the grave, exalted at God's right hand. Even next Sunday we'll celebrate that. So as we wait for that good news, let's stay safe, receive from God, love one another, reach out to each other, care for each other, phone each other, message each other, just support each other and show each other the love of Christ, which is, which is who God is and what God is all about. And let us show that love of Christ to all, for Christ died for all to give us life. And we have that good news to share, even as we feel isolated and alone, that God is with us and that God will be with us whatever happens. Amen. We'll say together the creed and I'll unmute everybody so we can hear each other speaking. It will sound noisy, but we will know that we are together. Let's say together. We trust in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We trust in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We trust in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We trust in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now come to sing another hymn together, which is a hymn which all of us know and are familiar with, singing on Palm Sunday. But it's a wonderful hymn. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. We we'll sing together. Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
Amen. Eternally rejoice in God's presence together. What I want us to do now is to listen to Helga as she will give us our prayers of intercession. Helga. Let us pray. Lord, we are filled once again with awe and wonder, with foreboding and love, with gratitude and humility, as we contemplate the story of the passion of your Son. Help us, your disciples, to feel in the depths of our being the sacrifice that was made for us and the immense ocean of your love. Fill us with renewed strength, we pray as we struggle to earn and repay that unmerited grace. Above all, as you turn the wood of the crucifix and the body of our Lord into a woody vine bearing the grapes of life, transform our beings so that we may live in and radiate your love. Lord, give us grace this holy week to follow in your Son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, your mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear which prevents nations from working together and neighbours from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord, give us grace this holy week to follow in your Son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are at home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness, or only a few, Lord Jesus Christ, stay with us, even as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, heal us. Lord, give us grace this holy week 
to follow in your son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, your mercy hear yeah, us. We pray for those among us who are stranded here and for those who have traveled to be with loved ones. And we pray for those in lockdown or self-isolating in Thailand, the UK, the US, and around the world. Lord, give us grace this holy week to follow in your son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Lord, let us never forget that your son too was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. May those whose suffering seems at times almost too difficult to bear be comforted by one who, though he may sit at your right hand, clothed in majesty, was also a physical man in our physical world and knew suffering from first hand, whether it was the pain of being betrayed by his friends or of dying on the cross. Remembering especially Lord, give us grace this holy week to follow in your son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have died so that others might live. May they be numbered with the saints in glory everlasting. And with them, May we rest and may we see. May we see and may we love. May we love and may we praise. In the end, which is no end, remembering especially. <coughs> Lord, give us grace this holy week to follow in your son's path from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, mercy hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, whose son, <laughs> son speaks to a triumphant will, we welcome, we welcome you, you today into our hearts. We ask you to enter our church. So that we may turn and claim your name of the whole world. Amen. Amen. We come now to the peace. We will share the peace with one another. And then I will say to each person in turn, peace be with you. So first of all, let us share the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So I'll say, peace be with you, Mom. Peace be with you, Ian. Peace be with you, Uni and Johan. Peace be with you, kids at the Youth Charity Foundation. Peace be with you, Pat and Julia. Peace. Peace be with you, Christopher. Peace be with you, Chris. Peace to all. Peace be with you, Blaine and Rebecca. Peace to all. Peace be with you, Arthur and Phyllis. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Dan. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Don. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Anders and Anne Christen. Peace, Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Bill. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Christine. Peace be with you. 
Peace be with you, Patrick Sweeney. Peace be with all of you. Peace be with you, William and Tante. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Krista and Mark. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Rick. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Jennifer. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Warren. Peace be with you also. Peace be with you, Angela and Jeff. Peace to you all. Peace be with you, Gong. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Nate and Mu Yang. Peace to you all. Peace be with you, Clarice. I don't think we have your sound, but peace be with you. Is there anyone else I've missed? I think that's all. Peace be with you all. Now we're going to sing again, but this time in Thai, so that might be difficult for some of us, but some of us will be able to sing, and the children will definitely be able to sing along, so that will be wonderful for them to be able to sing in Thai. Hosanna as well. So let's now sing together once again. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. We come now to the part of our service where we will be singing, not singing, but sharing together with the Eucharist, and that's what we'll share together with now. So if you have bread and wine, then you can prepare that ready, and we will be sharing the bread and wine together in a moment. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at the time of his passion and resurrection, and as that draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause. Exalting us, therefore, to join with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Christ took the cup and gave you thanks, giving it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one cup and one bread, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that we may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. We now share the body and blood of Christ. If you have bread and wine, then you can take and receive. We say together the prayer after communion, as we say those words together. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself, taking the form of a servant, and in obedience died upon the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you as we proclaim you as our Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father, Amen. We now sing our final hymn together for this morning, which is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, that great hymn of the faith which is sung every Palm Sunday. And now we sing it together as we join in worship to God. Amen. As we say the words of the Lord, we finish with our service this morning. May the Father who so loved the Son, and so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you to faith in his eternal name. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthen us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and among you now and forevermore. Amen. There are just one or two notices for this Sunday. The main notice is that we will have a service 
next Friday at 6 p.m. Thai time, 12 p.m. Central, 12 midday Central, no, 12 midday in the UK, 1 p.m. Central European time and 7 a.m. in the States Eastern Standard Time. All are welcome to join us, of course. That will be Good Friday and then again we'll be meeting together next week on Easter Sunday so we can rejoice together and we'll celebrate the resurrection of the Lord again at the same time this week, same time next week for that worship together. So, I don't think we have any other announcements to say. One thing the, um, I've been asked to say by the trustees is that we do still have ongoing expenses. We're still paying the rent, we're still paying the cleaner, the organist, even though she can't play. We're still paying all the other things we have to pay. So you can still put money in the offering. And in the email I sent this morning and on Thursday, it gives details of how you can do that. And that will help us to keep going and help us also to be able to share with those in need. We sent last week um, 15,000 baht, it's about four or five hundred dollars, over to India to Bishop Henry because um, we've seen on the television how bad things are in India. And um, there's a real need there for the poor people to be supported in this time. So it means we can carry on with the ongoing work of All Saints as we have the support of all the people here. That's all the announcements I think I have. I'm going to ask Jean now to dismiss us and then we can have a time of coffee and sharing with one another as best we can in such a large number. And let me just say thank you again to the children at the Youth Charity Foundation for their wonderful singing and Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So let's give me a wave again from the children over there. Thank you so much and we can wave to them. Let me ask Eugene to dismiss us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in of, the Christ. name of Christ. Amen. 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 So we've finished our service. It's been wonderful to see everybody here together. We've got so many people it will be difficult to talk all at once. But if anyone wants to say anything, I'll unmute everybody. If you put your hand up. We'll just do the best we can to communicate with each other. So if anyone wants to say anything, just raise your hand. And if you've, if you've finished, then you can leave us and go. You don't have to say. Uh, Anders. Just warm greetings to all of you from Sweden. It's been wonderful to be with you today. And thank you, Ian, for organizing this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Anybody else? Put your hand up if you have something to say. Chris. Well, but I, I was going to ask Anders and Anne Christine, uh, how is it in, in Sweden? I assume you are in your house, of course. And um, what is the feeling there in Sweden? People fearful or do they feel that things are under control? Well, uh, yes, we are at home. I'm working from home. Uh, but Angustine, you still go to work as yeah. you did before. Yeah, I work at the prison and in my parish. But it's getting more and more limited possibilities. But we still have churches open and we can still organize church services, but I think it will be very soon that churches will close. Okay, anybody else like to say something? Yeah, Bill, let's go to Bill. One second, go on. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you all for uh, being part of our, our service. And it's good to see everybody. God bless and have a good thank week. Thank you, Bill. God bless. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Nate and Muyang would like to say something, yeah. Okay, I'll go first. It's so nice to see all, especially it's so nice to see those children. I, I do miss them a lot. I want to ask them, how are, how are they doing now? Okay, how are the kids at the Youth Charity Foundation? We are doing good. Okay, you're all doing well. That's good to know. Okay, who else? Who else would like to speak? Help, Mama. 
<laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> okay, then let me say to you, God bless you, go on your way, but please stay and chat if you want to. Nobody has to stay and chat, but the service is finished. But if you want to stay and chat with each other, ask more questions, then please do. There's no, there's no limit to how long we can go on for. But if you want to leave now, the service is finished. So that's fine too. Yeah. Bless you. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.